Hello, uh, Brian Patton from Robota C, and today I'm going to show you a couple of cool concepts. Uh, one is um, creating a library, which is kind of handy to do, and two is um, actually installing that library, and three, just kind of incidentally, uh, I've decided to do it with the uh, the Mac Sonar EZ1, which is I think is a really nice, really nice device. Um, I'm going to try and do it in, in uh, less than 15 minutes, maybe 10. If not, I'll split it into two videos. First off, <clears throat> here's an easy one. And you can see it's, it's a remarkable device. I love these things um, for a couple of reasons. They give you so many options for output. Um, you can take it as analog, which is really easy to do. You can do it as a serial uh, feed, so it can send you the signal that you want to use which actually I've never done because um, I don't have that many serial ports available and I'm always thinking, well, you know, I should save it for something that absolutely has to have serial, like, uh, uh, you know, some sort of RF communication or something. And last but not least is the pulse width. And uh, what I love about using the pulse width is in, you know, my years of uh, building robots, my analog ports always seem to be used up. I mean, if you're doing firefighting or whatever competition, there's so many things you want to look at. Um, my digital ports tend to have, uh, I tend to have more than I need. I mean, ultimately, I use them for running the servo motors and a few other things, but even still, um, there, there, there tends to be plenty. And if you're going to mess around with something like a, a Pro Mini, for example, like this one, well, you only have, you know, four analog ports that are easy to get to. So if you can go to digital, you're way better off. Um, so that being said, my goal is to take this uh, Arduino 3.1, which is their latest and greatest, which I love, uh, in part because this whole row of digital pins, they can now uh, the, accept up to 5 volt uh, feedback. So you know, the way it was originally, the 3.0 was a 3.3 volt device, which is great. But as soon as you hook up something like, uh, well, any of the older uh, sensors or whatever, they tend to be 5 volt. And if you start pulsing it at 5 volt, you might burn out a pin. Whereas now, with the, uh, the 3.1, you can go ahead and handle the uh, 5 volt signal. So, let's play with that. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is hook up some wires to it that we can use and you can see here I don't know if you can see real well this is ground this is 5 volts and this one down here is PW or a pulse width so sticking with some reasonable convention I'm going to use this dark actually it's dark blue should have been black but I'll use this dark blue wire here for the ground and I'm going to use this one here as my red one is my 5 volt and I'll use this gray one here as my pulse width okay so now I've got the wires hooked up next thing I'll do is plug it in so here's a Arduino or I'm sorry a Teensy uh, 3.1 which is Arduino compatible and let's suck off some voltage so let's set this pin here, the black one, to ground. And the way this uh, TNC 3.0 is set up, <clears throat> um, I can be running it either on the 3.3 volt supply from the 3.1, or I can run it from 5 volts coming from the USB, which is set by this jumper here. So I'm going to go ahead and supply it with the 5 volts. And let's plug that in right there. Okay, so the outer pins are ground. The middle pins are um, the 5 volts as set by the jumper. And then I'm going to plug this guy into pin... No, oh, let's see, around my glasses here. Let's go with pin, um, pin 5. It's one of the PWM pins, which gives us a little bit of room to play. Okay. So here you can see I've got a Teensy 
3.1 setup uh, plugged in to the Max EZ1 uh, Sonar Ranger and we're ready to start creating a program and then a library. So let's go ahead and do that. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to move this aside here, is I'm going to find out exactly where my Arduino software is set up. And you can see from this, it's set in program files, the x86, Arduino, Arduino X. Just remember that, okay? Because we might need that. Let's open up Arduino. And the first thing we want to do is we just want to make the silly thing work. So I'm going to put that down here. I'm actually going to make it small because I don't want to put a lot of stuff on here. Um, so what do we got? Uh, we're going to need to collect some data. And we're going to need to, in this case, I think initially I want to convert it to something I can understand easily, like say inches. And I'm going to need to define some sort of pin that it's connected to. So let's put some, uh, let's put some variables in. Let's make an integer variable. We'll kind of call it the in pin. And I like to use capital. And I'm actually going to define it for the moment <clears throat> as equal to, you saw me put it in, it was pin 5, right? And I said I need a variable or something to hold the data that's coming in. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's make it a, um, let's call it max in. Okay, that seems reasonably uh, understandable. And uh, then I said, well, let's make it something we can understand like inches um, and I'll, I'll we're, we're going to expand upon that uh, okay so we now have our variables set up um, to the best of my knowledge all of the, uh, the the programs need some sort of a setup so let's let's put in a void setup area here and I'm going to throw some, I'll get that mouse out of there. So let's throw some brackets in there we can uh, use. And of course, we're going to have to have our uh, loop section. So let's put that in there. Oops, I forgot my brackets. Uh, okay. So we got plenty of working space here. Um, so let's go ahead and you know, set it up, test it out, see if it works. Um, the first thing we're going to do is I can tell you already that we're going to want to see the data. So let's do a serial, uh, serial begin, and let's set it at the 9600, which I think is a, a wonderful stable uh, default. Okay. Um, the other thing we're going to need to do is we're going to have to set the pin, right? We need to set the uh, the pin mode. We need to tell it whether or not it's in input or output. So I'm going to set the pin mode. And which pin are we talking about? We're talking about the in pin. And we want to have it set for uh, an input. Right? Okay. So I think all that makes reasonable sense. And now we need to actually make it do something. So let's um, let's collect some data into our uh, max in. So let's set uh, uh, max in equal to, we're gonna suck some data in. Uh, let's, so let's do a pulse in. P and where is it coming from? Well, it's coming from our in pin. And we're looking for, in this particular case with this, this sensor, we're looking for a high signal. Okay. And then I said, well, okay, let's convert it into something I can understand, like say inches. So why don't we go ahead and convert it into inches. So let's set our inches 
equal to, um, oops, I forgot the H, is equal to, and if you look carefully, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, oh, yes, you can. I should have pulled out of the package, but I think you'll see right here it says 147 microseconds per inch. Oh, that's that makes it really easy. All we have to do is take our max in and divide it by 147, and hopefully that's going to give us the data. All right? And now I want to see it, okay? Because I want to make sure it's working. So let's make our serial dot print. Um, oops. Have a problem with this. I'm still having a problem with it. First thing let's put out is, um, for example, the um, let's have it tell us the the raw data, the the, the max in. So let's we'll call that uh, let's call that value. Okay, close it up. And the next thing we're going to do is uh, let's put out the value. So, oh man, dyslexia gets the better of me every single time. And we're going to put out the max in. Okay. should be good and tell you what since I have such a hard time typing I'm just gonna copy and paste this and let's go ahead and put out the inches and we want to put out the actual value of inches And it would be nice to have a little place here where we can, um, so we can stall it for a moment. And let's put in a uh, little space so we can see that it's actually completed it. And the last thing is I should have put in a line feed because we want to see these on separate lines. Okay. So what we got? We've got our variables, uh, which of one of which I've already defined as pin five. We've got the serial begin. We've got the pin uh, set as input. We've got it collecting the pulse in and the inches. And then I'm going to go ahead and output it. I'm going to check it, make sure it's not some silly error that I've missed, which I've done hundreds of times. And come on, you can do faster than this. All right, I checked it okay. I'm going to close it off. I'm going to plug this in. Okay. And let's run it. Hopefully it finds it. I haven't run it since I plugged it in, so I'm going to plug this. And now I want to go ahead and see if I'm spitting out some data that I can understand. Oh my gosh, it's coming out so quick. You know what we need to do? We need to add a delay, don't we? Uh, let's give it a thousand, so that would be one second. And let's go ahead and reload that. And I will go ahead and do this serial monitor. Oh, that's beautiful. 16 inches, 16 inches, 16 inches. Um, I'm not sure what you can see. I'm going to put my hand here and lower it. Oops, I missed it off. Lower it down. Some of this I'm sure you can see, some of you can't, but that's actually really very good. I'll shoot a video of it proportioned, but I'm guessing that that's very, very close. 15 inches, 16 inches as I raise my hand up. 17, 13. So it, it's it's doing quite well right out of the box. I don't even have to calibrate it. 
So I'm going to shoot another video, and I'll see you soon.